Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to go to Malmö which is just about 15 minutes or so on the train south of where I am in Lund and this is one of their local breweries so we're going to go to South Plains Brewing Company and have a taste of their Oktoberfest Malmö beer. So I thought this was a good one to start with. They had quite a few of these in Sisti and Blog, quite a few of the different ones but since it was coming up to Oktoberfest I thought it would be quite cool to do a Swedish Oktoberfest beer so here we are but this is my very first encounter with this brewery so hopefully it is a good one but anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the company if you do want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all of the usual website links are in the video description below the brewery website links to my future reviews from um, from South Plains Brewing and also a link to the Facebook profile for the channel and also the untapped as well so feel free to connect with me in whatever way you wish it's always interesting to hear from you guys but anyway to tell you about the brewery itself this brewery was founded in 2012 by Jeffrey Scott Brown in Malmö in Skåne in southern Sweden just over the water of course from Copenhagen but Jeff was apparently a long time home brewer and he also trained as a chef but he decided to take the plunge and start up his own microbrewery in southern Malmö but originally Jeff is from San Francisco and he moved to Sweden to be a chef in 2003 and his wife Sasha is actually from Denmark and she helps him quite a bit with running the kind of business side of things at the brewery while he concentrates on the brewing side of things. But the brewery is based in an old sausage factory in southern Malmö and much of their equipment is actually old dairy or used brewing equipment which they've brought from Germany and they have a capacity to brew 5,000 litres of beer per month so a fairly small operation at the moment but apparently their beer is pretty good so I can see them growing quite a bit but even though they're only about three maybe four, just coming up four years old actually they do have a fairly big extent of, uh, of different beers so just to list some of those for you there's the APA, the Baltisk Porter, Burning Witches Brew which was the one I very nearly bought and then I saw the Oktoberfest one they have the Cloudberry Wheat, Golden Bitter, Optimus Erectus, Honey Oat Wheat, IPA, Juice Zombie uh, Mash Hysteria, Oktoberfest Malmö, Oli Oli Oxen, Right to Strike, Russian Imperial Porter which is meant to be an awesome one and also the Winter Ale and they also have an experimental series of beers as well so as I say like them on Facebook and check out the brewery website and you'll get an idea of all of the different beers that they do but if this is a good one I'll definitely go down to Malmö and get some of the other ones out of the Sisti and Belog down there so anyway this guy um, I've read a few things about this one this one is a 4% October beer. I've seen it described on Rate Beer and Beer Advocate as being a mild beer, which is obviously quite unusual when it comes to Oktoberfest, but I'm not so bothered about styles of beer. As long as they taste good, that's the main thing for me. I like most styles of beer, so really quite interested to try this one here. It says on the side, you're holding a pure artisan craft ale free of any additives. This is a real ale, unfiltered and unpasteurized, so small so a small amount of sediment at the bottom is natural. A twisty brew for an alternative take on a classic. Our Oktoberfest Malmö is a beer that will tattoo your taste buds and possibly even initiate you in the secrets of the universe. This beer is not for the weekend tourist. Residents of Nirvana only, please. If you must store this beer, please keep it refrigerated. This beer is best served as fresh as possible, chilled and enjoyed in a glass, which is exactly what we're going to do here. And you can see Jeffrey Scott Brown's signature at the bottom there. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this before we open it up. That's the bit I've just read for you. You can see Jeffrey Brown's signature there. There's a zebra on it for some reason. Not quite sure why that is, but zebras are cool, so we'll, we'll forgive them for that one. But as you can see, it's got a nice kind of fist pump there. And this um, kind of, the fist pump, this one's like a real picture, but all the other ones that I remember seeing had a sort of cartoon version of that. So this kind of fist pump, I guess, is the, the typical symbol of South Plains Brewing Company. So should be quite a nice one. This guy is a 33 centilitre bottle um, and it has all the things, the Facebook and everything on the side. So I'll need to go and like them on Facebook and send them the video once it publishes. But plain bottle cap on this. So without further ado, let's get this guy open and see how we get on here. My very first beer from Malmö and as you can see, quite a smoky opening there, but you can tell even just looking through the bottle of this that it is a pretty, pretty dark beer. And it actually smells, it actually smells somewhat like a porter just when you're uh, you're pouring it out. So not a kind of, most Oktoberfest beers you'll come across are a kind of Ma uh, Merzen style of beer, sort of German style Merzen. But this guy definitely could well be a mild ale, but it 
smelt a bit like a porter when it was being poured out. But as you can see, it's poured a really kind of dark, sort of, probably an ebony or sort of chestnut, no, not chestnut, probably a rosewood kind of ebony colour for this one. I always like to describe beers in terms of like guitar wood colours. I think that's always a good way to do it. But this is definitely a kind of ebony or um, or rosewood, dark rosewoody colour, this one. If I hold it up to the light just over here, there's not even a kind of ruby edge to it. It's all black, yeah, but you can see there's a little bit of sediment in the bottom there and there's a f kind of finger of a frothy beigey tan head there, so I'll just stick the light back up. But yeah, it looks very nice. The carbonation, there's a few big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, but quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of that head there. And without even paying too much attention to the Roma, you can get the roasted slightly kind of coffee-ish malts off this one. So we'll have a proper look at the aroma now. This is quite an interesting aroma, this one. There is a bit, quite a bit of a roasted malt character to this beer. And you can pick up a bit of chocolate sweetness as well. And there's a definite red, kind of fruity uh, ester presence in there. Maybe even just a little bit sour, those kind of fruity notes that you're getting from this one. But yeah, it smells really nice. You can pick up those raisins, plums and figs, the typical sort of red stone fruit notes from this guy. But on top of that, you've got quite a big kind of toasty, bready presence. There's a good bit of caramel in there. As I say, some nice kind of chocolate. But a big kind of almost like a brown ready bry, uh, rye bready presence in this beer, I should say. But you can pick up a little bit of a nutty and woody note in there. It is a bit toasted and some nice, some nice bready notes. Like I say, there is maybe a little bit of caramel but there is a bit of a kind of roasted coffee note to this beer as well. But definitely a very malt forward aroma and at the back of the palate, or at the back of the nose, sorry, you do have a little bit of a, uh, how do you say, a sort of soury fruit character from this one. So it should be quite an interesting beer for us to try. So without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. So this is the Malmö Oktoberfest from South Plains Brewing Company in Malmö, Skåne, Sweden. Only about 15 minutes away from me and Lund. Skål! Now that's, that's quite unusual. Just need to let my palate adjust to that a little bit. Yeah, there's a definite balance in this beer between a kind of sour beer characteristic and then a dark roasted element. It, it, and I can see why some people would interpret this beer as being a mild ale because it's got a really dark roasted malt base on it, but then the fruity side of the beer is kind of reminiscent of some of these sour beers that you come across. Just let my palate adjust to it fully. Before you think too much about the flavours when you taste beer, you definitely need to sugar it around your mouth a little bit. Um, and just and just let your whole palate adjust to it. But it's, it's really interesting this because it's got two extremes. It's got a very sharp tart fruit character to it and then you've got a really dark and quite roasted, um, almost not quite smoky but a very roasted and bitter uh, malt base on this one and then you've just got that kind of sour fruit character as well so it's, it's really quite interesting. Yeah, so you've got a really, as I say, at the front of the palate where the fruity esters are coming out, you've got a really sharp, quite, um, quite, how do you say, a sort of big fruity ester character to this one. It's, it's almost like a sour beer. It's almost like some of these beers that have the, the Britannomyces added to them to give them that really sharp kind of sour character. But yeah, as you kind of get into it and you get used to that character a bit more, it does become a little bit more red and fruity, but it really does still remind me of the of the some of these kind of sour beers that you come across with that Britannomyces. It's, it's quite nice actually because I've never had a beer that has these two extremes in it as kind of prominent as these two are. So you get a nice sharp um, sour beer character, then all of a sudden it just kind of gives way to this nice dark roasted malt base. It's it's, it's it's a very unusual one. It definitely tests your palate, but it's quite nice once your once your palate adjusts to it. 
But yeah, a nice tart red fruity ester coming out on this one. As I say, it comes in as quite a kind of bread sour um, character when you first take it, and that's around the very kind of front curve of your tongue there. But underneath that, um, you've got quite an interesting malt base on this. It's a def there's a definite kind of um, bready element to it. But on top of that, it's quite dark roasted roasted character to it. It's quite, it's a little bit ashy, I would say. There is some coffee in there, but there is a bit of a kind of ashy flavour to this one. Almost as if they've used kind of Fugles hops from England. Fugles hops always gives you this kind of um, dark, roasted, ashy character in the beer, which is quite interesting. But this is definitely a more malty ashness, but it is it is quite reminiscent of those, uh, those English, roasted English hops, actually. I think there is just a little bit of caramel in the middle of the palate there, but it's quite it's overpowered really by that sort of dark roasted character. And there is a kind of nutty or woody flavour in the the back in the middle of the palate in this one too. So just pay attention to that. But around the back corners of the palate, it's maybe just a little bit of an earthy hop in there. I really would like to know if they've used English hops in this beer because you can definitely taste a little bit of that. I want to say there's a bit of an earthy and ashy hop character at the very back corners of the palate and it smooths out as you come towards the front of the, 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 the tongue there and then as I say you've got that kind of um, soury fruity character that comes in. You get a little oily bubble behind the very front of your tongue and that's where these kind of sour fruity characters come out. They, they, they more morph into a kind of red fruity ester as you get through the beer. And the other thing you'll notice about this beer as you go through it is there's a definite um, chocolatey presence in this one kind of builds up as you uh, as you drink it as well. It's, it's really quite interesting this one. As I say, it's got two extremes of flavour. It's got quite a sour character to it and then it's got this really um, quite roasted malt base to it and that roasted bitter character really lingers on the middle of the palate so overall it's it's quite an interesting beer it's not like any Oktoberfest beer that I've come across before um, in terms of the style I'm not really sure how you could describe that this one but by reading about the brewery it seems they want to make unusual beers that people will enjoy and with this one they certainly have done that so if you like a really dark roasted bitter beer then this is one to one for you to go for and likewise if you enjoy sour beers then this could be quite an interesting one for you as well but in terms of the mouthfeel of this one I would definitely say it's it's mid body definitely carbonation and it is quite smooth and it does have a good kind of roasty bitter malty character to it and um, that that really lingers into the aftertaste there but when you're actually taking it in Pardon me. It does have quite a a kind of sour, uh, quite a sour attack on it. I would say so. Just let your palate adjust to it a bit. It smooths out as you get through the beer. I always find that with sour beers. When I take them in, I'm like the. But then once it kind of smooths out a little bit, it definitely gives you a bit more of a fruity character to the beer. So overall, it's actually a really quite interesting beer, and I would recommend that you try it. I'll need to go and review some of the other ones. As I said, I nearly, I very nearly bought the Burning Witches Brew from uh, from South Plains Brewing Company, but I thought it was probably best to go for the Oktoberfest one since this beer is probably a kind of uh, limited release one. So it's been an interesting first review from South Plains Brewing Company. Hopefully, I can do some more of their beers for you soon. So I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you, as always, if you happen to have tried this beer yourself, please let me know in the comment section your own thoughts on it. As I say, if you like a nice dark roasted porter or a dark roasted stout or something like that, this is a beer that you should have a go of. And likewise, if you like sour beers then it could be one for you as well. And as I say, the, the flavours in this one are very unusual just because it's two extremes and they bring them together. But they do it quite well and it's, it's not like any Oktoberfest beer I've ever tried before. So if you want something unusual then definitely give this guy a go. But let me know your own thoughts on this beer. And as always, until the next beer review, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I hope you're enjoying the Swedish reviews that I'm doing for you at the moment. But thanks again for watching and until my next beer review, it's Slange just now.